Alors, bonsoir tout le monde. Good Bienvenue. evening, everyone, and welcome to this regular public meeting of uh, the month of August earlier than usual during the summer months. Welcome to one and all. We will begin with the opening. We, my dear colleagues, let's have the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, the wisdom to know the difference. So the meeting is called to order. We have a quorum, the clerk, yes. Conflict of interest, anyone? Is there any conflict of interest to be declared by the councillors? It would seem not. We will proceed with adoption of the agenda, moved by Councillor Cormier, seconded by Councillor Leblanc, that we accept the agenda as presented. On the question, no question. All those in favor, say aye. Contrary reminded me. The agenda is adopted. We will begin immediately with the presentation, inquiries and presentations, starting with 7.1, inquiries by council members for the RCMP. I don't see. I don't see anyone. No one from the RCMP in the area, as always. I remember last month we had that problem. Yes. We're slightly earlier than usual, six o'clock during the summer month. Anyway, if you have any complaints, please send them to the uh, administrator, I can tell you. It, it's not often that I say, I receive many complaints about the traffic in general, but especially on Paul Street and on Champlain Street. I know that a small group of people is across from what was the sky zone in the parking and youth meet with cars and with mufflers that are not silent at all. Modified mufflers, if I may say it. Well, let's try to, we are trying to do something special with the ICMP next time we get a chance to talk to them. I'm here, Your Worship. I heard you, I was trying to figure how to remove the mute on my system. Okay. Who's talking? Benoit Jolet, RCMP. Welcome. I see that Councilor Benito, since we're talking, we're on the issue. Thank you, Worship to pursue what you said. I received some complaints the last two weeks about the Gatsby Street. On Gatsby, if we leave Notre Dame up to College Street, it's as if it's the Mountain Airport. Cars go at full speed and the people are scared because when we're Talking along the road, there's no sidewalk. So you go down Gaspé, there is a sidewalk on one side. But on the other side, some people uh, walk with uh, small children or even seniors complain to me. So it would be appreciated if we could have more presence uh, by the ICMP or more control. And what we were told, there's a lot of motorcycles that use Gaspé Street as a corridor to scare people off with their modified uh, muffler. Your Worship, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. 
Mr. Jolette, as you heard many times, especially the problem with Paul Street and uh, Champlain Street also, we received complaints that had an, an impact on people in the beautiful apartment block. People talk a lot. The owner has already lost uh, some clients, some tenants who decided because of the noise and uh, the cars. Not normal noise, but uh, frequent noise and loud noise with cars. They uh, remove the converter and uh, obviously it creates a, a noise and exorbitant that has an impact on everybody. I heard your comment about uh, and personally I noticed that everything will be communicated and uh, to try and work some more in that zone to uh, ensure a security. Your Worship, last year, the superintendent told us that time, the noise with modified muffler, there was no law to prohibit them. The province had to legislate. Do we know at the present time if the province is working on that file? Because Moncton has the same thing. I talked to counselors from Moncton and the problem is the same over there. No, no, the modified muffler, the, the uh, motorcycle to answer the question for the modified uh, muffler, there is a law on, in New Brunswick that we can enforce and give fines. But the problem is to have evidence, it's already uh, gone to court and judges said, unless we have uh, some way of detecting the, that the charge would not be supported. But it's something that was being studied at the provincial level to see if these instruments would be provided to the RCMP in New Brunswick. Uh, there should be a follow-up because I was not aware that the superintendent had said that. I'll make a follow-up to have an answer at the next meeting. Thank you. If there's nothing else, we'll go on to the next item. Thank you very much, uh, officer, for being with us. As always, we'll understand if you decide to hang up. Thank you. Now, 7.2 presentation a report from the Public Transport Transit Act Ad, Ad Hoc Committee. Mr. Shah. Mr. Richard. Good evening, Your Worship, counselors, and dear colleagues. Tonight, I'm here to present to you the results of a working session of an Ad Hoc Committee that was uh, initiated last winter. A reminder, the mandate was to make recommendations to the Municipal Council as to future approach that the Council should take to uh, better use the transit, public transit. You remember, we talked especially about transit on demand and what was happening with the Hilbert. Uh, I want to thank the volunteer members, the citizens who decided to sit on the committee, who gave some beautiful sunny evening last spring to sit and help us to try and uh, put together these initiatives. I want to thank Nicole Doucette and Natasha, uh, municipal employees who coordinated the whole thing. The committee met on four occasions. So, considering the pandemic, we had meeting by zone. Some meetings were sent to the elected uh, uh, officials, so you received some details. 
So in principle, the people seem to agree or seem to have a consensus, especially on the approach for service on demand for the app, considering the context that exists. The emphasis, the work of the committee was mostly put on what would be the impact on the client, the impact of the new service and the client. The impact of the mandate was not to see if it was functional, more economic or less, but the impact that it had on the client, on the customer. So essentially, there is a benefit that seemed to be seen by the participants of service on demand, but there were concerns as to the Uber. There's Councillor Boutique can add if I forget some things, but there was especially the worry that we're still legally, uh, we don't have the possibility of receiving Uber in the province. Some municipalities have started to do some work, Fredericton, Moncton maybe, but we are not able immediately to have that service available. Another thing, there was a concern as to the whole taxi industry. We were able to see what happened elsewhere at the Canadian level. There's some restrictions as to the impact that it could have on the taxi industry. Those were two concerns that were raised by the people. What was important for the members of the committee, no matter what the city decides to do, we will have to make sure to have a good communication, excellent communication, whether it's with the pilot project or the present uh, service. What was raised is some residents may not know that we have an, a taxi bus available. They did mention that suggestion to see if we could make sure that there would be a good communication, uh, even if we were ever to have a project. In the discussion that we had, the analysis we made, we want to privilege the service, be accessible, the vehicles that are accessible, accessible to uh, wheelchairs. And it was mentioned a small vehicle, not small, but uh, bigger than what we have right now. So it summarized pretty well uh, the comments from the participants as for the suggestions that were made. As management, we think we could develop some scenario with uh, an approach on demand for a period of nine to 12 months and aim on a service that is accessible and modified or amended for the seniors. This was mentioned by the participants also. What we're proposing to finalize the details of this scenario. We could also look at the zones that we want to uh, serve the frequency and uh, speak with the users and come with some examples and scenarios of cost and vehicles to be purchased if need be. There would be discussions to be had as to suggestions we could have uh, as far as the government. Is it a municipality? Is it with Kodiak? Or uh, what do we know as to the management of the whole issue? As far as next step, we propose to, uh, to wait for the conclusion of uh, the study. We could develop scenarios of a, an eventual pilot project to come back to you in the fall. Uh, during the budget sessions, and we could have the different scenarios presented. This is what we're proposing tonight. Number one, it was to give you a quick report of the work of these participants and to be able to let you comment, maybe Councillor Le Boutillier uh, participated. I don't know if she wanted to add anything as to her experience uh, with the experience that we had. Yes, uh, it, it was, it opened the eyes to look uh, see what is being done elsewhere in the country. It was quite unanimous, as it was mentioned, on demand. We had a presentation. It means 
I want, I have to go to work 124 King Street. I can leave at 8 o'clock. I would like to leave at 5 o'clock at night to come back. There is a system that is being used in several cities. It will manage the bus and the circuit as such. And it works. This is what there are costs, quite reasonable in municipalities, same size as ours. So that's pretty well what the committee look at. There are several other things, but mostly that's what it was, Uber. We did some research on Uber and across the world. There are challenges. How can you control we would have a responsibility? That is quite a concern also, the Uber approach. And on this, I would like to say thank you to Lou, Nicole, and Natasha. It was during the COVID crisis, and it went very, very well, the approach and the management of it all. A new experience for everyone to have uh, meetings like that. I want to thank the members of the committee also. They learned a lot of things uh, about technology. Is there any other comments or questions from the uh, members of council? No. No. So thank you for your presentation. And we uh, keep on being interested in public transit. Next item, 7.3, public presentation. Mr. Melanson, you have details on this? Mike. Good evening, Mr. Gérard. Good evening. How are you? Fine, as always, says the mayor. We're waiting for your presentation. The first file, and illustrate. Z9217. Can you hear me? Yes, fine. We are presently in a public presentation for a request of uh, uh, an amendment, a proposed amendment to the, to the development plan. The, the street next to Amiro and the owner of the given property, the Mountain Catholic uh, Bishop public presentation. We will present the uh, critical dates and will propose an amendment to the development plan, the municipal plan, and the zoning bylaw. You have the deadline for the process, July the 13th. Council fixed the date for public hearing, public, and the notice were placed on website July 23rd, and we sent notice to the neighboring citizen as usual, and we are in public hearing. The next day, it's September the 14th, public hearing, and se September the 16th, and then the decision of the council on October the 13th. My computer is slow, he says. Hey. Don't. You have in front of you where the site is uh, located. What is in red, uh, right here, <coughs> the section of the property in yellow, it's a property that is presently residential. And to come back to the previous uh, slide, here in red, is the portion of the two properties that are proposed to be amended 
uh, for the soil condition. We have here a parcel, Central Street on the east, and south is Bunny Street. So to come back to this one, at the last meeting, there was a question from Councilor Gaudet about the width, how wide was the property that is owned by the municipality, where you see my mouse, there is a 12 meters wide that goes all the way south of this uh, piece of pro property. So the map that is in front of you shows the amendment to the municipal plan that is being proposed. So we go from uh, a change to a res from residential. As an example, the parcel property with the use in the zone, we allow a cemetery at present time, but we would allow some uh, uh, daycare center. We want to change that to uh, one a zone that is mostly residential. So we could have a uh, residential on this part of the property, the change of zoning that is being proposed uh, institutional to mix uh, use. Here again, to go over the deadline, the critical date. So you see the dates, July 23rd and, and just to Put, let put you in context, we change our approach as to the public presentation and public hearings. And we saw a good opportunity to let the promoters uh, talk to the council either to explain certain things that we did not talk about in our presentation from the staff, but or to answer some questions that may be asked by the councils. So before we let the promoter, the representative uh, talk, I would like to mention that the municipality received a letter or comments from the neighbors. And if Mark could uh, read it before uh, Richard talks, and if Richard could answer certain concerns that are expressed in uh, that letter and answer questions asked by the counselors. Thank you for the presentation. Mr. Minasso, yes, we did receive worship correspondence. So it has to do with the municipal plan following the acknowledgement uh, of the plan, the municipal plan of the city of Dieppe and the change Z9 2017. We want to share with you some concern about the proposed development project being the owner of 67 Croissant Francaise. Our property is related to the green and the outside the yard. Before we proceed with the purchase of our property, we studied the neighboring zone. And since community zoning was uh, going along our uh, house, we bought it. The outside uh, yard was the main reason to purchase this property. This being said, we're aware the city of the app will benefit from this development. If we see reasonable that we ask that we should keep a line of trees along the property so that our property will not, uh, will keep its value while allowing the development of the city of the app. Please accept Mr. Mnason and Mr. Regard, Cynthia and Mathieu Roy. August 7, 2020. Thank you. So, before we ask Mr. Poirier, as it was mentioned by Mr. Gerard, that we would allow the developer to uh, answer some questions. Mr. Poirier? 
Good evening. Good evening. Are you okay? Yes. Can you hear me? I assume. Yes. There's one member of council that will have questions, among others, but you heard the letter that was uh, presented to us. It's up to you to decide how you want to proceed. Go ahead. Maybe I can deal with that letter in case the question of the counselor may be answered in part. So we ask uh, rezoning on the parcel of three acres on a project that has 20 acres in all. We talk about 15% of the site that would change from institutional, the cemetery, to residential. As for the comments from the people in the letter, I don't know where their house is located, but I would take for granted that it is across the parcel of three acres and not the parcel that was rezoned in the past. I can tell them that it will be the back of their yard that will connect the back of their yard. It's the end of a cul-de-sac and it gives more opportunities to save the trees because of the zone that are in the traffic circle. All I can say is it's a res residential development to which they will be connected. The people who will live in the new subdivision have an interest and have it hard the beauty of the trees. So I can only put them at ease that their interests will be the same as the interests of the new residents that will move in that area. They mentioned that it's a community zoning, but it was institutional, really. They could have faced with a, a, a down, a, clear, a, a clearance. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll deal with the question from the councillor, starting with Mr. Gaudet. Thank you, Your Worship. I have a few comments first. First of all, I have to mention that the cut that we had last week made a few citizens jump in my area. Uh, without knowing what was happening, they were afraid that the trees would fall all over the place. But in fact, the cut was limited to a, a given area. My question, I know that the map that was shown tonight showing the whole property, not the map that I have on my computer. Because on my computer, the map shows land for public pur purposes, as it is called, in a place close to Central Street on the southern part. There's two triangles that are aimed to be used or to be given to the city of Dieppe. In discussions with the man, men who are working with the zoning, they said that the city had decided not to take these properties, but take money in, instead. If that is the case, I like the suggestion that instead of uh, seeding these uh, triangles, we should restructure a uh, more acute uh, structure of the trail. If you look at the trail, when it enters from Vanier, it goes behind the house, there's a turn. And we notice that there is 
a, a crack, about 15, 20 feet. I'm not sure what is the width of that. Uh, instead of making that crack, if the land could continue part of the public land up as far as Central Street, it will uh, protect the trail in a better way. In, in that where the trail is 12 meters in, in width, but we look six meters outside, there's only three uh, meters of land for the city. So I suggest, I don't know what impact, maybe there is an impact for two properties that you have, Mr. Quarier, uh, but if we take part out and we go as far as central, in my opinion, it will facilitate the protection of the trail, especially from 201001 on my map, because the trail deviates somewhat. When I walk on that trail, I, three meters is not far from the border. It's a suggestion that I wish could be considered instead of uh, being paid for the land, we could protect that trail. Thank you. Can I add something? Sure. Rightly so, to follow comment from Councilor Gaudet, there was a change that was shared in your package and in my presentation to the preliminary subdivision that you received and was additional information. That information was presented inside this public hearing. On the question of uh, Councillor Godet, I would suggest to refer to 10.5.2 in today's agenda to undertake that debate. It's more a debate concerning subdivision, public land, and it should be discussed at 10.5.2 and not here. Mr. Renoso, can you explain here? This is a, a rezoning and not a subdivision. What Mr. Gerard is saying at 10.5.2, that's when we consider the public utilities. You want to bring a question at that time? It could be debated at that time. At 10.5.2. Maybe. But the part that I'm suggesting to be changed to uh, make the length of the trail is part of the project. We talk about the rezoning. This is only what can be developed on the site and not how it will be developed. That's why at 10.5.2 would be the appropriate time. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Continue with the next one. 7.4, which is also a public hearing. Mr. Girard. Thank you. Public hearing to, uh, for a request to amend the conditions that we receive about the bylaw Z-10-2017-7 was adopted this year. And the applicant receives new information and uh, <coughs> there's a, a change. He would like to bring a change to their application. And since it's a specific uh, condition of the rezoning, and we can make a substantial uh, change. We can go through it in public hearing and present these uh, amendments, these change. I just want to go through it. So as the last presentation, the deadline and the proposed 
to Z uh, 10 2017 7. You have the critical dates. Uh, we are presently public hearing tonight. The file will be presented uh, to the public, uh, the, the, the planning commission, and it will be brought back on September the 14th for uh, a decision to situate you. The, pro the proposed project is on Lafayette. So the proposed development that is proposed a new proposed uh, project will propose 42 uh, residents within a uh, building. The height doesn't change. The height of the building remains the same. We had seven uh, residents on the building as a whole. And uh, we add also to a few uh, parking spaces to meet the need for the residents in question. And here we're proposing to develop the uh, parking space in the green space that uh, you see. And the space is uh, placed uh, on the property. And we'll present you the whole thing just to place you in context, to put you in context. I think you had a copy of the title. You can make a follow up on this presentation. But what I will present as far as the changes is essentially, if you look at my cursor, the building as such, take a size from here up to the end of, of the house. So we talk about an increase approximately 15 meters. So th there is an amendment that is substantial, if you wish, but nevertheless, it meets well with the project as a whole. So as for the architectural plan, there's no special change uh, to my knowledge as to the information that is presented uh, uh, what is presented is what should be built to have a longer building than it was before. Once again, I repeat the critical dates for the process. Uh, and uh, we also received, I think it was a letter from the neighbors concerning the proposed project. So if Mark wants to read it. Yes, Mr. Melanson. This is the correspondence received for today's public hearing. We live at 1295 Amiro Street, next to the property question 009995. Since we like our quiet area along the marsh, uh, we're here to hear the proposed change. We have a concern concerning all the animals that live in the wooded area. The developers have assured us that they will work with us. As for the green space between the two properties, yours truly, my boy, and Patrick Blanchard. This was received on August the 4th, 2020. I see that Mr. Siri Comontois has uh, joined us, Mr. Comtois. I don't know if you have something to add to Mr. Girard's presentation. Yes. Uh, wetland, uh, wetland 
Donc, c'est tout ce que ma présentation démontre vraiment euh, par rapport à, à ce plan-là. Euh, Alexandre, si c'est possible plan. de descendre Alexandre, un petit peu, euh, on va voir un petit peu mieux sur un autre. Euh, c'est better on, uh, Encore une. One more. Bon. Um, ça fait qu'autrement dit, si on regarde là, le terrain, le 13-17 à Miro, sur cette présentation-là, on voit que euh, la ligne là, euh, originale était peut-être un petit peu plus haut sur le terrain, alors que maintenant, elle se trouve l'autre côté de la, de la piste de marche, là, si on veut, de la walking trail. Euh, donc, ceci étant dit, ça, ça nous a permis, à travers le processus de design, de, de réaliser qu'on pouvait ajouter, euh, en termes de footprint au sol, on pouvait ajouter deux unités supplémentaires, trois euh, trois étages, donc six unités. Euh, six unit over donc, three en, en voyant ça, type. évidemment, et puis avec so la demande qui, qui est assez forte pour, euh, pour les appartements dans ce coin-là, euh, c'est ce qui a motivé notre demande. For, uh, au niveau du uh, voisin qui est tout juste à côté, uh, Pali Blanchard et, et, et Marc Baudouin, uh, je les ai rencontrés personnellement là, uh, avant, personally. De, avant de présenter ce, ce projet-là uh, pour project. Uh, aller les rassurer, uh, puis uh, aller les rassurer leur mentionner le qu'on travaillerait avec eux pour être certain qu'ils gardent euh, le, le côté privé de leur propriété le côté naturel. Euh, C'est encore, euh, évidemment encore dans nos, dans nos intentions. Euh, je leur ai laissé un message aujourd'hui, suite à des discussions avec Alexandre, pour, euh, pour confirmer qu'on va éloigner l'accès la, de notre site euh, à, la, à, la, à la Main Trail. Euh, pour ne pas que ça frôle leur propriété, so puis euh, afin de garder là, un, euh, une zone, euh, une zone d'arbre mature entre, zone, euh, entre les deux propriétés. Uh, trees, uh, mature trees between the two properties in question. Okay, very, very well. Thank you. Processus continues, and we will see you next step unless there's council, uh, questions from the councillors. Brido, thank you, Worship. By looking at the plan of this project and apartment blocks in the app previously, I very seldom see a given area separation of garbage, the blue and the green. It's always been a problem in the apartment building. There's no common accommodation for that kind of uh, situation. Uh, is, it, is it part of the plan or the project, the uh, separation of green uh, garbage and blue? Since we're around with the people from the area, there's a lot of discussions that is being had uh, internally as to how the people will manage that problem. It is a problem. And I hope that those who have an opportunity to build new structures, that they will consider that aspect because it's becoming a challenge for the sorting that is being done to sort the blue with the green and the uh, clear bags. I know it's a big uh, challenge for the whole area. We won't put it on the back of one or two developers uh, from yet, but it is a consideration that must be taken in that consideration. Next time you see Roland, please. Roland Leblanc. You want to talk to him, I'm sure it's an issue that that passionates him, that is passionate. Mr. Le Boutier, your worship, just to Mr. Courtois, is the plan we have in front of us the last one? Oui. You say there oui. was recent changes? Yes, the answer is yes. Yes. Thank you, Your Worship. It's simply a question when I look at page eight of the presentation. It seems that 
the walking trail, a bicycle trail, goes through that property from what we see on the on the picture. Wouldn't this be an opportunity to regulate it? In due time, there was right of way to negotiate with all the owners along the trail. I'll check if this was the case, but Mr. Sima confirms that we have a right of way signed with the owner. If the property, if the owner changes, then it's transferred. Thank you. No one else? Thank you, Your Worship. A question that was asked by a resident from that area. The safety of the exit for the Amiro Road, because it's in a curve, to look. Mr. Sima. Went from engineering. Don't be shy. Hello. Yes. We evaluated that when it was presented, and we don't see any problems with the entrance, the location of the entrance, since it is a residential block. We don't see too many cars exit at the same time, so there's not difference from a block compared to a family dwelling, a single family dwelling. It's higher density, granted, but the cars will only leave one at a time and not all at the same time. It's not like an intersection, if you wish. The second one was the outside, fin the outside finish. They're more modern when we look. We uh, wouldn't want to see uh, all of vinyl uh, uh, finishing uh, for the outside. If I can answer your question, of course, what is being proposed as far as arch architectural site will be developed. And we have standard inside that shows the amount of uh, material that will be used. And we have a multifamily unit, and the applicant has the uh, expect to meet the requirements. Can you look at anything other than this uh, finishing outside? Well, there, there's more than vinyl, there's specific material that will be used, and some uh, wood of different kind. So I will leave the owner uh, to say more and to put something better on this project also. Excellent. I'm happy to hear this because it's a beautiful project and a beautiful area. We want to have something Absolutely. nice looking. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Leblanc. I don't see anyone else immediately on that. I don't know if you have anything to add. If not, we'll continue with the process the public hearing later on. You don't have the dates in front of me, but it brings us in September. September the 14th. Thank you. That's all. Now we will thank you one and all to be present. We'll go to item number eight, questions by members of the public. Our huge public on location. There's none, I understand, in the present uh, situation. A new process of giving access to the people to communicate with us through internet is 
on a slow pace. <coughs> no questions have been received by anyone, so everybody is rejoicing in the beautiful weather and they're happy with the facilities and the service they're receiving from the city of Lyon. On that, we'll continue. Adoption of the minutes, number nine, adoption of the regular council meeting held on July the 13th, July 13th, 2020, moved by Councilor Cormier, seconded by Councilor Leblanc. It will proceed. We'll accept the minutes for that meeting. On the question. Any question from the councillors? If you had a chance to uh, go through the minutes word by word, this being said, no question. All those in favor say aye. Country reminded nay. So the minutes for the meeting of uh, July the 13th is adopted as presented now. Motions, memorandum, and nominations, 10, finance 10.1, Mr. Melasso. Thank you, Worship. Good evening, everyone. The first file, we have in front of you a renewal about a service agreement for pension consultant services for the employees of the city. In 2017, we had an interest and could your service sir, financial service was the one that was retained. We signed an agreement with them. It was for a duration of three years with an option to renew for another three years. We recommend, therefore, to proceed with the extension of another three years. The service of quality that we receive from them and uh, financial service is at ease to make a recommendation. It is for your consideration tonight to, uh, for January the 1st, 2021. Thank you. Reading of the resolution. Mrs. Arsenal, please. Thank you, Worship. That council authorize a renewal of the service agreement with Couture Services Financier Corporation relating to pension counseling service for the City of Dieppe employees as recommended by the City of Dieppe Pension Plan Advisory Committee. I so move. Moved by Ms. Arsenault, seconded by Councillor Brido. On the question. No question. All those in favor say aye. Entry reminded nay. Carried as presented. Now, item 10.2 Engineering for the municipal designated highway program annually. We have to present a, a five-year plan on our designated highway. Some belong to the province of New Brunswick. We see in the resolution explain all the elements of what is submitted, but in 2021 for next year, it is really the fixture of uh, Anamiro and resurfacing on designated highway that were uh, re repaired in the last few years and to guarantee extension, $1,450,000 that will be shared between the city and the Department of Transportation in the formula established by the province. So the councillor who will read it will explain the next four years for future years. For the reading of this resolution, Mr. Gaudet, that council approved the city of the app priority project under the municipal designated highway program for the 2021 20, to 2025 period as outlined below. 2021 asphalt preservation, correct, a million four hundred fifty thousand dollars crack ceiling and it street from Chartersville Road to Melanson Road and Champlain Street from the city's eastern section of the city limits, microsurfacing, Champlain Street from McKinney Avenue to Midland Drive, and Amiro Street from Chartersville Road to Alain Gillette Street, financing source, city of Dieppe, 
$649,600. And it was the Department of Transportation Infrastructure, $800,400. 2022, Mellon Pave, Champlain, uh, 1,900,000, Champlain Street, uh, between from the city, Western Limit, Wakadi. Financial source, City of Moncton, 651,200. City, uh, Department of Transportation Infrastructure, 1,048,000. Asphalt Preservation, $700,000. Crack, ceiling, the Boulevard, sector from Harrodsville Boulevard, to the quality in the airport, microsurfacing, Amiro Street, from Charlottesville Road to Melanson Road, and Champlain Street from the city's Eastern section, city limit, financial uh, source, city of Dieppe, 313,600. Department of New, uh, New Brunswick Transportation and Infrastructure, 386,400. 2023, asphalt preservation, 550,000. Microsurfacing the Boulevard from Harrisville Boulevard to the Quality Inn Airport. Financing uh, source, uh, city of Dieppe. 246,400, Department of Transportation, First Church of New Brunswick, $303,600, 2024, Mill and Pave, 2,425,000, on Champlain Street from Dieppe Boulevard to Corvette Street, financial source, uh, the city of Dieppe, 1,086,400, New Brunswick Department of Transportation and Infrastructure, $1,338,600. 2025, Mill and Pave, Champlain Street, $2,450,000. Champlain Street from Covet Street to Moncton Flight College, financing source, City of Dieppe, $1,097,600. Department of Transportation and Infrastructure, $1,352,400. Asphalt preservation, sorry, oh, which the screen is asphalt preservation, one million six hundred fifty thousand dollars. Crack ceiling, Amiro Street from Chartersville Road and Melanson Road and Champlain Street from the city's eastern section to city limit. Microsurfacing, Champlain Street from Acadie Avenue to Midland Drive and Amiro Street from Charlottesville Road to Alain Gillette Street. Financing source, City of Dieppe, 739,200. New Brunswick Department of Transportation and Infrastructure, 910,800. I so move. Moved by Councilor Gwinnett, seconded by Councilor Thibodeau. No other question. It's a clarification question, if I may. In 2021, 2022, 2025, on the eastern section of Street up to the limit, where does it start the eastern side? It begins at the Dieppe uh, Boulevard, or where? It should be uh, clearer. We talk 2021, 2022, 2025, and we mentioned that. Oui. Is there someone uh, from engineering here? C'est Mathieu, là, je peux peut-être clarifier un petit peu. Mathieu, Donc, c'est la section le juste après le Mountain Flight College où on a fait les, the, uh, les réparations il y a deux ans, je pense que c'était. Uh, donc, c'est refaire le microsurfacing sur cette surface-là. Puis là, ensuite, quand on parle de les, les refaire l'asphalte, c'est sur la même section jusqu'au genre Mountain Flight College. C'était juste après une bonne fontaine qui délimite vraiment ce qui délimite le projet. And it would be interest to mention yep. the Mountain Flight College on the east, eastern side. Does that clarify? Anyone else? Any other question? 
a question for the resolution all those in favor of the resolution say aye country reminded nay carried as presented this bring us to the next item appointment yeah 10.3.1 the arts and culture center you've received the appointment of miss Ms. Turgeon, for the reading. Anyone, please? So, Mr. Brideau. Your Worship, I'll do it a pleasure that Council appoint Jose Turgeon Roy on the Board of Directors of the Diapart and Culture Center for another term ending September the 11th, 2023. I so move, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Bridot, seconded by Councillor Leblanc. Other question, Mr. Ella, if your worship, it's a good nomination. Josie is a good mother and she does a lot of volunteer work. My question is on leadership at the Art Center. Where are we at as far as the uh, manager and all that? Where are we at? Presently, Louis Dusset is still uh, acting executive director. They are studying the strategic. It is about to be completed. When everything is completed, they will undertake the process of choosing a new general director. Changes have been made, so it proceeds as it should. Other questions? So, anything else? Are those in favor say aye. Country reminded nay. Harry, as presented. This bring us to 10.4 operations. Mr. Minanson, 10.4.1 renewal of Leslie uh, lease agreement, space rental. Yes, CMP is rental space since 2010 you have in front of you the renewal of a lease for five-year term and it's an increase of two percent per year for the duration of the lease so it's for the renewal to proceed with the signing uh, as proposed thank you for the reading of the resolution mr leblanc Thank you, Your Worship, that Council authorized the renewal of the lease agreement between the City of Dieppe and the Royal Canadian Mountain Police relating to the rental of 2,600 square feet of space on the second floor of the uh, station located at 500 Govan Road for a five-year period ending on September 30th, 2025. I so move, Your Worship. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Leblanc, seconded by Councillor Credit. Other question. No question, all those in favor say aye. Country reminded nay. Carried. This brings us to 10.4.2 tender award for the demolition of uh, Century Arena on July last. It, uh, we told the staff to put a tender for the demolition. So, I mean, decks and the construction are going well according to the specification we received six proposed tender four were retained because they met all the requirements you have in front of you a recommendation to proceed with vegan demolition at a cost of 273,000 plus hst to uh, demolish uh, the centennial arena they have the responsibility of uh, considering all the elements of the re restoration of the land and the water and, and sewage uh, system and the mechanical, uh, the, the site will become completely uh, able to be developed in the future. A recommendation here. For the reading, this is there's no. Your worship. That council award the tender of the demolition of Saint Nat Arena to 
Verigan uh, Demolition Limited at a cost of $273,000 plus HSC and authorized this expenditure to be defrayed from account number 3-3-30-12-7602 general capital budget intergenerational uh, complex. All right, so move your worship. Moved by Ms. Harris. No, seconded by Councilor Cormier on the question. Ms. Brido, your worship. Can we know if we have a date as to when the work should be starting? Uh, look, Mr. Nado, to see if uh, the information is available. Thank you, worship. Tomorrow morning, if uh, the vote is positive, we have a meeting with the company to get a schedule as to the timetable for that project. So very shortly, tomorrow. Any other question? If not, all those in favor, say aye. Country minded nay, carried as presented. 10.4.3. Tender award once again for trail and uh, fruit tree park development project, Mr. Melanson. This deals with the Douaron uh, house. It's the outside development that will join the Saint Anselm River Tree Park. He went to get suppliers. Four companies were contacted. Two submitted prices. We recommend to proceed with Jackie Fraser at Landscaping Limited for an amount of $70,700. And also, we take the opportunity to combine a project of participatory budget in that project. It's a fruit tree park. It goes well with the Maison Duaron to give an access towards the Saint Anselm Rotary Park. The amount of money that was retained was integrated to this project of 70700 It's our recommendation. We ask you to proceed with the transfer of $35,000 that was originally planned for the uh, fruit tree. This should be one of the last elements of the construction project of uh, the Duaron House. And we'll have a complete project afterwards. For the reading, Ms. Yada. Your Worship, that council award the tender for the development of a trail from the Douaron Heritage House to the Rotary Central Sand Park, as well as a fruit tree park to the lowest bidder, J.K. Fraser and Landscaping and Sun Landscaping Limited at a cost of 70700 plus HST as per the proposal dated July the 30th, 2020, and authorized that 35,000 of this expenditure be defrayed from account number 1 2 20 14 2150. General operating uh, budget, expenses, corporate affairs, and that the balance be defrayed from account number 3 3 30 12 7705. General capital budget. Duero. That council further authorize a budget transfer the amount of 35. $5,000 from the account number 7-4-20-12-8910, General Operating Reserve Fund, to account number 1-2-20-14-2150, General Operating Budget, Expenses, Corporate Affairs, I so move the worship, moved by Councillor Ella, seconded by Councillor Thibodeau. On the question. No question. All those in favor, say aye. Entry reminded. Carry as presented. This brings us to 10.4.4, adoption of policy L12020, rental rates. I will ask uh, the manager responsible for the rental to make a presentation because it deals with the public. It's quite precise on the changes to be brought to the pol policy L1. It will include the Duano House and other elements that we will offer in the fall. If you will 
uh, open Ms. Dalfos' uh, mic. Ms. Dalfos, good evening. Good evening, Your Worship. Good evening, members of council. Tonight, I present the policy L1 with some changes and some newly policy L1 was mentioned in November 2019 up to 2022, knowing we would come back in the meantime for new things that we will bring in the, in the fall. So I don't know if you can see on the screen. Just a sec. Small summary on what I want to discuss. There's no amendment. We don't touch the rental of the arenas, the rental of the site. There's no change. And also for the sports uh, property, the new title in terrification, the uh, dwell house with my colleague, Pauline Cormier, who is ready to answer your question at distance and with an additional for cyclist trail and a few amendments for the aquatic center that we want to make changes as the opportunity arises. So the changes uh, for the rental of, um, rental of classes, there's no amendment made for typical regular classes as we have the Rotary Pavilion. Uh, those who are uniplex, they are of a given size, they will fall in the spaces where the capacity goes up to 50 or up to 150. Everything will be within the framework that exists already. What is new is the kitchen of the Rotary Pavilion. No, and a change. We will amend the kitchen and the Rotary. It's new to have a clarification because we adopted it in November. As we worked uh, on it, we saw there was an opportunity to add a terrification on a half day and per hour to improve the service that we can offer according to the requests, the demands that we received. Then the kitchen at Uniplex that has 12 stations in the kitchen to offer some training. It will be ready in the fall, it's certain regulation that uh, will be changed because of the uh, COVID and it will follow closely what we're offering at Rotary uh, Complex. It's more furnished, it, it has more capacity and more uh, tools in that kitchen, a little bit more expensive with that. Uh, the training at Uniplex, a training a room for all the sports uh, team, whether it's the arena, whether it's uh, the mountain climbers, outside groups. We have a training room in Uniplex that will be there for our young people or for our teams from the app. We followed the fees rate according to the different activities elsewhere and it will be five additional five dollars, uh, slightly more to have an access of this one will be better equipped with the uh, training uh, equipment. A new thing is the Byron Eduardo House. It doesn't have an official name as yet, but it's the room that is in the barn that will be able to offer meetings and special events in that frame that we added in special events in the rate that schedule to receive uh, students. And that is uh, within the same rates as we were using already for the uh, Rotary Pavilion who were receiving uh, meetings, uh, wedding, and and we'll be back uh, in November. A change here, Aquatic Center, and something we saw a lot of people are using the basin at the Aquatic Center of the city of Dieppe to swim and land, but to have activities. A lot of people use boat. Previously, they had to pay an additional fee or separate fee. And if they were a member, it did not include all the activities. With this change, it makes such that it, it will include all their activities except the swimming courses for the young people. And the bulk uh, amount is we want to make sure that they don't have two cards to punch as it was in the past. 
and the bulk uh, will be all together to improve the use of uh, the user and to offer a better service. The public uh, swim uh, plan, we had $7 per children instead of five. Now we will charge a fee. We had seven and included the room. Now we separate the two to be able to uh, accommodate uh, uh, the younger ones. We want to uh, penalize them and the rental of the room is separate from uh, the fee. That's a small change. Uh, something new, the cyclist uh, trail. In the last few years, we have a lot of use at the uh, cyclist trail used by a lot by young people. I think it's important to maintain the level of service that we are offering. As always, we offer this uh, fee that is brand new for the uh, rental that is structured. It does not affect the public who wants to use it their own well they have the option now to be able they've always had the option of renting it was offered freely to have recuperation by the municipality and will add for the, the use this is the house with entrance fees we have a package deal for group and individual, I don't know if Pauline Cormier would have something to add. Uh, my colleague Pauline, Pauline, you have something to add? Madame Cormier. Ms. Cormier, you have anything to add? No, on no, the pas package, du tout. Uh, uh, no, I can tell you that we have we have six different areas that seem to be in the same way. We are looking at places similar to us. We are happy and we are happy. We are happy and we are happy. It includes the tax, too. It does include the tax, by the way. Thank you. That's all. Is that it? Is that it? That it? That's it. Thank you. Anyway, reading first of all the resolution. Bye. Maybe we can have questions before we go. Maybe we'll go faster. Monsieur Perido. Is that for? I did not notice. A lot of people are seniors and they ask what is the cost that we want to charge at Uniplex for those who only want to walk, to use uh, the walk trail on the upper floor, there's no fee. We'll develop our uh, COVID and maybe it'll be uh, different, maybe uh, to use reservation to go but there's no fee to use the trail, uh, the walk trail. Don't have to buy a membership card. Well, some people, not for the time being. Do they have to prove? No, there's no residence requirement. No, everybody's welcome. If a walking a group uh, develops, that's, they could take. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I'm proud to hear that uh, the other uh, youth will remain the same. The other side of the street, some people have serious problem with the young people or uh, the program for youth. I'm happy the deadline for the opening of Duaro House. We talk about the price, but it's such a jewel for the community. We uh, have invested a lot and communication wise it's very nice it's well developed and when is the opening your worship we have a meeting that is scheduled i don't have it in front of me but we've had meeting the plan is to open that this fall we'll come back following that meeting to finalize and make sure everything is uh, it's okay technology technology and everything else and the outside development we will be sure to come back uh, to you at that time. Mr. Le Boutier, thank you, Worship. It's more information, question, anything else. When I look at the membership card, what happened to 50, why not 55, why not 60? 50, 50 has been there since the opening of the Aquatic Center, if I'm not mistaken. Was it with the boys and girls uh, club? There was something with 50 years. 
but that's a good one. I'm in that group age, age group, I should say. It made me jump when I see 50 years. People all work at that age pretty, pretty well. I, no, no, I'll check it out and uh, with the, all the municipalities and everything by memory is that we go by the provincial structure and the seniors federation of New Brunswick. We've certainly used a reference Et somewhere. Monsieur le maire, si que je peux ajouter, oui, je Monsieur le maire, c'est depuis aussi nous autres on garde à 50 ans et plus avec Madoc, municipalité à mi des années, c'est 50. Madoc, donc c'est depuis ça que nous autres on garde à 50. That's when we started with 50 years old. Madoc, municipalité à mi des années. Municipality, I mean, is I mean, which means uh, that seniors, a friend, a municipality. That's where we uh, took the 50 years old. Monsieur Gaudet, just uh, a reflection uh, concerning the uh, Gladwell House, something that is important in the episode to have the opportunity that our children can visit the school. And I wonder if there is not a special time that could be given to uh, a, a group of, uh, uh, in a class, in a given class that could go there and maybe uh, ask the <laughs> school board, uh, charge the school board. Ms. Cormier, do you have a, an answer? Uh, no, not really. Uh, no, we'll, we'll, really. No, we'll, we'll look at it. We'll, we'll see if we get organized classes with uh, class, classes with the uh, it's certainly something we can look at. Thank you. Anything else? No, nothing else for the reading. Mr. Boutier? The Council of your Policy L-128 entitled Rental Phase for Facilities, Municipal Spaces and Adopt New Policy L-1. 2020 entitled rental rates for facilities and municipal services. I move the adoption. Move with pleasure and seconded with happiness by Governor Ella. On the question. No question. All those in favor say aye. Good reminded. Carried as presented. This brings us to the PAC recommendation 10.5.1. First file in front of you, you have the recommendation of the PAC, the Planning Advisory Committee. Recommendation is to make a correction on tentative plan for Belfora Eastman subdivision. It's to relocate servitude of the local government. It's a correction recommended by PAC. The reading of the resolution, Monsieur Leblanc. Sorry. Thank you, Worship. That Council accept the Planning Advisory Committee's recommendation relating to the acceptance of the Belfora Easement Subdivision tentative plan, which provides for the uh, relocation of a local. Government Service Eastman. I so move your worship. Move by Councillor Leblanc, seconded by Councillor Tibedo. Under question. Question of those in favor say aye. Country reminded me, carried. 10.5.2. Mr. Minasso. It's a PAC uh, make a recommendation to amend a tentative plan, the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Moncton subdivision. So here is the creation of public street and replacement of public utility easement or local government. Name would be Bodeman uh, Lane. It's a recommendation from the PAC for the reading of the uh, resolution, Mr. Benito. Your worship, that council accept the Planning Advisory Committee's recommendation 
relating to the acceptance of the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Moncton subdivision, amending tentative plan, which provides for the creation of public uh, street, as well as the location of land of public purpose and other local government uh, service easement that council further accept the name and new street, Bo Domain Court. I saw move, move by Councillor Benito, seconded by Councillor Arsenal on the question. Mr. Gaudet, I come back on the discussion we've had earlier and the change of zone. I don't know if Mr. Poitier is online. Yes, he is. Where is he? Is he there? Yes. My question is uh, has to do with the development of the public uh, property that we want to take the money instead of the property for the development. I recommend that instead of taking the money, we should uh, draw a line. Uh, there, you see on the map, there is uh, uh, an opening that shows close to the trail where it's closer than elsewhere. I would suggest that instead of taking the money, we take the uh, square, the net square in bow triangle to draw a new line along the trail to widen uh, somewhat uh, property or the ex access. I don't know how it can affect uh, the right of the property of Mr. Poitier's uh, property, but if we look at the trail that is between Vanier and uh, going down parallel with Grégoire. It's very wide. I think there's 30 meters in width. And this one here only has uh, a few meters. If we can add three, four other uh, meters to the width, the section where uh, the opening is, it could protect that alley. It's a beautiful alley. Could protect the trees and uh, the trees will, the, otherwise the trees will disappear. Well, here, two things. The 12 meters that is recommended by the staff is what we recommend to all subdivision projects. Every development, this is our recommendation, but I asked the planning staff to calculate what it would be as far as uh, additional money. It goes to 1.25 to 1.5 meters. Not more than that. We talk about, if I remember, Mr. Gerard, 450 square meters. So it's about a meter, a meter and a half uh, additional meters in width. So it will protect uh, a wood area. It, it, it's not a very important. It's not three or four meters, as you say, but I'm asking Mr. Wadi a question. Mr. Gerard, do you have something to add? indirect relation and then I imagine that Charles uh, raised it but if we look at the water that will be accumulated on that portion of uh, land higher to a typical lot a typical lot has 30 meters in width and here if we look at the plan we see that the water at that section had a depth of 44 meters in depth. So it could be a good uh, uh, property between the Vanier Street and the existing property. So it comes back to my question for Mr. Poirier. It's not the intention of Mr. Poirier to cut off the to uh, cut, uh, you keep some trees on the property as much as possible. Yes, good evening. Yes. The clear cut that was done was to accommodate the pipeline if everything is adopted tonight. And 
it's not related to the subdivision plan. It's just that, but as far as the lack of money for the public property for which we were asked uh, for money, as Mr. Melanson said, it's not a huge amount, it's 385 square meter. My only concern that I have to uh, discuss other uh, public property tonight, you need a plan, it has to be approved by the council. So it would mean to table or put off the approval of the plan, what I'm ready to commit myself to do. If Mr. Melanson and Jason Nadeau agree to see if we can widen it on a shorter distance for the trail, especially close to Central Street, because there it becomes a yard uh, besides the house instead of the back. I'm open, but it would have we have to agree on the lot that would be given to the city and not necessarily public lot and later on you would rezone into public uh, i only am I'm, I'm thinking of a way of not uh, creating delays but as councillor godet as we said the backyard of bordeman street go very deep and of course, we will impose a conservation zone at the end of the lot, because as you know, in our other project, we are never in favor of cutting everything. It's a clear cut. I'm very happy to hear you say that. That was my second part of the question. Once you clear cut the uh, property, it will come back to natural because I see some, uh, really some, in the back, uh, you see some print uh, when you go through your clothes. Thank you for that. And good luck with your project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Worship. It's a comment that I've made before. It's that. A ruel in English is lane. A, a court is cool in French. It, it's a grammatical. Uh, we should make sure we have the proper terms. But ruel and court is not the same. Thank you. We'll give it to the linguistic expert. No, that I don't uh, consider you as an expert in the French language, but. Uh, Thank you for that. If there's nothing else of those in favor of the resolution, say aye. Contrary reminded me. 10.5.2 is adopted as presented. Now we go to 10.5.3. That's it. Pack recommendation uh, amending tender plan. Yeah, as you know, so the pact is recommended the acceptation of a tentative plan and a subdivision uh, plan as for your approval for the reading of the resolution. Monsieur Alain, Monsieur your worship, that council accept the planning advisory committee's recommendation relating to the acceptance of the city of Dieppe subdivision amending tentative plan dated June the 26, 2020, which provides for the a widening of a public street. I so move, Your Worship. Move by Councillor Aida, seconded by Councillor Arsenault. On the question. No question. All those in favor say aye. Contrary reminded nay. So, resolution is uh, carried as presented. Item 11, municipal bylaws. We have no readings tonight. Well, notice of motion. So we proceed 13 inquiries and announcement by 
counselors. I remind you, we had several people <laughs> for a discussion in camera. So, you know, four minutes in the limit of things would be appreciated. Starting with Ms. Lemoutier, your worship, I'll be brief. I would like to know where we're at. We discussed briefly on a long-term planning uh, plan for Diet. What is the interest? Mike? Mr. Gerard. Where is he? Could you, Councillor Boutier, can you explain? I know that you've asked previously to know why we're asking so many requests in rezoning. Is that what you're getting at? Yes, exactly. We have a lot of uh, requests for rezoning that are approved the application, but at the same time, instead of being reactive, let's be proactive. And what do we want in our municipality? How many are we going to have multifamily and uh, everything else? I would like to see a development as a question differently. It's something we do from time to time. Where are we at and when is the next schedule uh, to uh, review the municipal plan. The question, generally speaking, Andre and I, we have the process of making some recommendation to the council. We intended to look at our proposal uh, in the in the fall, and our analysis will. Uh, go further than your question. We intend to make a lot of uh, amendment proposals uh, to deal with uh, certain things that are happening inside the municipality for the last few years. As for a total uh, revision of uh, the uh, city plan, we have a mandate according to the Planning Act. Every 10 years, we adopted the Municipal Planning Act in 2017. And uh, the planning uh, zoning, it's a little premature now to make a global or total uh, re uh, review of the whole planning. But we're in the process of uh, seeing the rezoning to look at the tendency and uh, where we're at. Thank you. Another question, I will send an email. I would like to know if we look at the request that was done uh, at the volleyball outside municipality or outside the center to see where we're at. Yes, I've discussed it with Mrs. Cormier, there seems to be outside volleyball uh, land at the youth, and Ms. Cormier is still on Zoom, and uh, it could be a temporary uh, area we did not intend to have outside uh, volleyball zone outside. Ms. Cormier, it would seem she's gone. No, we'll come back and do I would like to wish a happy August 15th to everyone. Good Acadian day to one and all. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Snow, thank you, Worship. I only have three small things. The flowers, the decoration on Champlain Street. We don't have it this, this year. Yes, for a reason in March, April, May, COVID, we didn't know where we were going and what was to be expected. We made choices to limit certain activities. So the lamp, the street lamp were canceled. I missed that part. I want to say congratulations 
transact while they've been put in the Business Elite Canada magazine. Very beautiful uh, article. I wanted to congratulate them. And good Canadian Day, August 15, 2020. Mr. Thibodeau, yes, I have two points. Some uh, wood cutting was uh, done on a conservation, environmental conservation between the Boise Street and Conservation Street, and the city of Dieppe apparently owns the property. And the city of Dieppe gave a contract uh, to have the trees cut down. Now, everything was left there. The logs are piled up. The branches were piled also. The people from the ward are complaining. The answer that I was given by the city, because the, the agent is telling us for the natural regeneration. It is to let it re regenerate naturally. I don't see how it can be done. If you have a pile of log, one over the other one, how you can you can uh, regenerate. It will never, the one who had the contract, maybe they did not uh, understand what they were told. I've never seen this before, but that people make such a mess. I was told we could not pick it up because it was impossible to make it that far to reach it. If we have such a piece of land, don't we have a right of way to make it to that area? I was made aware of that file this afternoon. I will do a follow up this afternoon. I know it's a conservation zone. It's not a a property that we want to make it public. I don't have any more details for the time being. I'm not an expert in that field. Right, Can't hear him, I'm sorry. Don't want to turn the vowel, but that's what, if you don't have too much to say, maybe we can uh, set it up for another time. What we can do, make an observation and bring it back or inform the counselors of what the situation, make a presentation for the people who will be present in the fall. Maybe we can make a presentation to the council. All right, fine, thank you. We'll come back. My second point is, repeat, happy Acadian Day to everyone. Uh, for all the citizens who are listening to us, listen to us. Monsieur Blanc, thank you, Your Worship. Two points on the same thing. Following a conversation with the general manager, Fox Creek Road, The word is for, is with Transagua. It's not a municipal uh, project then, no. It's a municipal street? Yes. It's not a private, it's a Transagua. We're partners with uh, the communication uh, sewerage line. It's too bad we wouldn't have known it and maybe fill the ditches at the same time, because we're there now, we could have done it at the same time. My second thing, my second point is, a few complaints this weekend, some lights that were installed, traffic lights, uh, with the red, yellow, and green, the delay between each light is five minutes to cross one side to the other. We talk about uh, 
pedestrian crossing noted. The traffic, we have a lane. So the traffic goes in one lane. And we have a light that lasts about five minutes for the crossing. And there's a delay in the back. Maybe we could make a phone call to, uh, I would ask the engineering service to follow up with the person responsible for the project. Thank you. Silverido. Your Worship, a few points to bring up. One, I just received a message. A citizen who seems to be a fence erected in front of New Union Flex. Why a fence? I assume that person is listening to us. I want to ask the question, there won't be any fence in front of Uniplex to answer his question. The other thing I want to raise, there are uh, senior people who asked me this year, during the winter, could we clear the Gaspé Street uh, part, uh, the trail? that goes to Bash Street. Some people were going to Florida in the winter and they're getting ready slowly to see some walking trail. As I said earlier at the beginning, the Gaspé Street, there's a lot of traffic, there's a lot of speed and we don't have any sidewalk in the Gaspé uh, Park. So I send my message to Mr. Burke, who will take care of it. My other thing, I want to wish every Acadian, let's show our colors in the next few days. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cormier, thank you, Your Worship. Three points. Happy August the 15th to win and all. Happy Labor Day. We meet only on September the 14th and good uh, school year for all those who are involved. Thank you. Thank you, worship. Two information uh, points on the public transit. It would seem that the level of service at the present time that uh, is in place until September uh, seem to meet the requirement there won't be any changes until September in, uh, in the schedule. I won't go through all the different schedules, but we will continue until December. Secondly, we talk about the screen uh, inside the bus for the protection of uh, the drivers and behind the seats for the uh, the fees collection will be done as of October 24th. The people have to come in through the back. That Those are the two changes observed. September and August 24th for the entrance to the public bus system. Thank you. Thank you, Monsieur. Uh, oh, no, there's one left. Monsieur Alain. I will continue to say happy Acadian day, good school day, and manager have, but I, the hour at a time, when, people can put water on the lawn. My neighbors are ask, asking me, they look at the lawn and starting to be yellow. We have our time who can and who can't and what day and what other time. Could we clarify that for our public? I would appreciate that. The spring, the water is still allowed. We have a very hot summer. We have to manage the water. We have to be responsible. It's still allowed. It's allowed to do it according to civic uh, 
if you have a spray, you can do it on the. If you are uh, odd number, you can do it on odd days. If you have an address that is even, then it's a, an even day. That's what is allowed. And don't spray in the middle of the afternoon, early in the morning or late at night when it's cooler. They're good practices and the people can find good practices uh, to be made. But if they don't have to spray, it's even better. Conserve the water. Thank you. I have a landscaping expert on my street and check the time because it's not after eight o'clock in the morning and not before six o'clock at night. That is what is prescribed. Once again, do it on a limited time. Don't keep it open from six o'clock until the next morning because then you're uh, impeding on the uh, on both the good celebration of August the 15th. It will be a virtual show. But it's on the city's website. And essentially, it's, the broadcast is from the Diep Art and Culture Center. Good celebration. Good August the 15th. We will see you all in September. Wow. We meet all the time. Good evening, everybody. Thank you.